On May 19, 1984, two helicopters carrying Alaska State Troopers embarked on a manhunt in the wilderness near the remote town of Manly Hot Springs. Their target was Michael Allen Silka, an outsider suspected of the recent murders of six nearby residents. When one of the helicopters descended in front of Silka's position near a riverbank, he was ready for them. He moved toward the hovering chopper and fired around from his Ruger No. 1 single-shot rifle. The .30-06 bullet narrowly missed the troopers and passed through the roof of the chopper. Immediately, two of the troopers answered with bursts of fire from their M16A1s, but none of their bullets found the target. Silka fired a second shot, which instantly killed trooper Troy Duncan and injured Captain Don Lawrence. At the same time, Trooper Jeff Hall fired another burst, hitting Silka with eight rounds and killing him. According to Hall, the entire exchange lasted about two seconds. This story gives us two examples of how skill with a rifle matters a lot more than the rifle itself. Michael Silka was a deranged lunatic, but he was also a very skilled marksman. Two rounds and two seconds on a moving target with a single shot rifle requires some very serious ability. Fortunately, Jeff Hall also had some serious ability, including extensive and recent experience with shooting from moving helicopters. Otherwise, that encounter might have gone a lot worse for the troopers. Whether you have a state-of-the-art combat rifle or a simple deer rifle, it's the ability of the rifleman that determines how useful that tool is. Last week, we looked at general purpose rifles like scout rifles and other handy lightweight bolt actions that are often called practical rifles. These can be used for a variety of different types of hunting. They can easily be carried for long periods of time, and they can even be used for self-defense from human attackers if absolutely necessary. They're legal in all 50 states, and they don't tend to draw the kind of negative attention that semi-autos do in a lot of places. Just don't take one with you to get coffee. Learning to run these kind of rifles to their full potential is becoming kind of a lost art. Most rifle training and competition that you'll find is either geared toward long range precision with large heavy rifles or close quarters work with semi-automatic carbines. The most basic marksmanship fundamentals like trigger control, sight alignment, breathing, that kind of stuff you can still learn in a lot of places. So that's not really what I'm getting into today. I'm looking at the skills required to run a quick handling bolt action or a lever action with speed and practical accuracy at extreme close range out to about three or 400 yards. If you work on those skills, you will quickly discover what a practical rifle is really capable of and you'll start to see what kind of hardware is gonna work best for whatever you plan to use that rifle for. Starting at close range, the big skill to master is the snapshot. From a carrying position or a ready position, we wanna be able to quickly bring the rifle up on target and guarantee a solid first hit. A good snapshot is one of the skills that Jeff Cooper believed was an indication of a competent rifleman. His standard has you starting at a high ready with the butt of the rifle at the hip level. From that position, if you can consistently hit a four inch circle at 25 yards in one and a half seconds or a 10 inch circle at 50 yards in about the same amount of time, then you've got a pretty good snapshot. That first shot is always the most important, especially when you've got to manually cycle the bolt. So you're not gonna be doing any true rapid fire with a bolt action, but it is possible to get follow-up shots a lot quicker than most people think. One way to work on this is to run some simple handgun style exercises at close range. So like maybe a 10 yard failure drill. That would be two shots to the body and one shot to the head. You'll get a lot of practice running the bolt really quickly, which in itself isn't necessarily all that difficult, but it tends to reveal some weaknesses in certain bolt action designs. A lot of modern bolt actions just don't respond well to being run really hard, and that's one of the things that separates a rugged practical rifle from a more casual hunting rifle. Doing these kind of drills, you will also find out pretty quickly just how close you can get to the target before your scope actually starts to slow you down because you can't find the target through the glass as quickly as you can bring the rifle up to your eye. A variable magnification scope that goes down to a true one power would be ideal, but you can still be pretty quick with a little magnification like uh, one and a half power. Fortunately, we're seeing a lot more low power variable scopes on the market lately, and the prices are continually dropping. 
The three to nine and the two to 10 power optics are still probably the most popular and those have their place, but I think inside about 40 yards, they're gonna slow most people down. Shooting at 100 yards and beyond, we get into the different shooting positions and the use of the loop sling. You might be familiar with the military loop sling and shooting from the prone or sitting or kneeling positions, but being able to actually get into those positions in a hurry, uh, that's the real challenge. For a practical rifle, you can't really use a traditional military loop sling. They're just too slow to put on. You pretty much have to use a three-point ching sling or something like a Rhodesian sling that allows you to get into it while you're moving into your position. If you have a range where you can set it up, Cooper's Rifle 10 Drill is a good test of your ability to take advantage of the various shooting positions using the sling for support. So to do this, you would set up an IDPA target at 300 yards, and then when the timer starts, you just dive into any position you want and fire two rounds. Then you run to 275 and fire two more, run to 250, fire two more, run to 225, and here you can't actually go to prone. You have to fire two rounds from either offhand or sitting or kneeling. And then you fire your last two rounds at 200 yards, and there you have to take the shots uh, standing at, in an offhand position. Any hits in the center circle are five points. In the down one zone, you get four points, and all other hits on the target are two points. So 10 rounds total, 50 points possible. Cooper considered a good score to be 40 or better with at least five center hits and a time under two minutes. Now, despite what the uh, clever editing from last week's video might suggest, I'm a pretty mediocre rifle shooter at best. I can do the rifle 10 drill in under two minutes and I can score over 40 points. I just can't do both on the same run. So I still need some work, but I still like this drill because it's really physical. It's not just a test of marksmanship, but how well your marksmanship holds up when you add some exertion. The other major skill to master is simply rifle manipulations, running the bolt quickly and smoothly, uh, keeping the ammo topped off or switching out magazines and manipulating the safety. Now, fortunately, you get plenty of practice doing all that stuff while you're working on the other skills, so improvement should come pretty naturally. If you're solid with overall rifle handling and you've got a good snapshot and you're quick with the sling and the different shooting positions, uh, that's a pretty good foundation of practical rifle skills. Now, I said training for practical rifle skills is tough to find, but it's not impossible. Randy Kane, who I mentioned last week, does his practical rifle class at least once a year, and he's really the go-to guy for this stuff. Gunsight Academy also does their uh, 270 rifle class, and that covers a lot of the same skills. If neither of those are practical for you and you still want some basic formal rifle training, I'd recommend checking out a Project Appleseed Rifle Clinic. They will teach you the fundamentals of rifle shooting, including how to use a loop sling and all of the basic shooting positions. These clinics are held all over the country and they're very affordable. Um, you're probably not gonna find any better deal for rifle training. Now, it's not a practical rifle class like the stuff I was talking about today. Most apple seeds are actually set up for you to use a semi-automatic 22, but you can use a bolt action if you want a real challenge. And uh, either way, it's a great way to sharpen your rifle skills before you move into some of the stuff I was talking about earlier. If you can't make it out to an apple seed, at the very least, go read The Art of the Rifle by Jeff Cooper. And if that doesn't motivate you to get out there and actually learn to shoot your rifle better, then you might need a new hobby.